hello everyone hi hope you guys can see me and hear me hi siri hi shreya pradyuman ojas good afternoon uh, vaishnavi so what we are doing in these classes is that we are covering previous year papers so i took part 1 and part 2 on my youtube i, I hope some of you were there on my uh, youtube channel cat panda where i discussed part 1 and part 2 for these now what i'm going to discuss is part 3 so uh, there were a total of 24 questions sorry there were a total of 26 questions which appeared in cat 2020 slot 1 and now what i'm discussing is part 3 of that uh shreya i might have i'm not sure i obviously covered the same thing in multiple batches so if you have an idea about it if you have seen this class please feel uh, free to leave so that's the idea that we are going to discuss today that uh from 26 questions this is part 3 part 1 and part 2 we did eight eight questions each those are on my youtube channel and the remaining 10 questions we will discuss now good afternoon ojas for those of you who might be joining me for the first time my name is ravi handa i have been teaching for cat uh, for close to 15 years i actually used to run a website called handagafanda.com through which i have taught 20000 plus students online recently this website was acquired by an academy and that's the reason you see me here in a uh, if you want to know which class is happening when what the schedule is like please join my telegram group which is available on cat prep online let me share the link of the telegram group as well uh so you guys can join my telegram group from there now uh as of, I'll, i'll come back to this yeah so this is the schedule that i have this is the schedule that i have as you can see cat 2020 slot 1 part 1 and part 2 i they, i have already conducted them on my youtube channel part 3 i am doing here next week next week again i'll do part 1 and part 2 on my youtube channel part 3 will be a special class same time next week the week following that slot 3 the week following that cat 2019 so in the month of august my goal is to cover the previous year papers for quant for quant with the help of these mastering the past sessions and these are the geometry classes that i am taking tomorrow on my youtube channel i will be covering up the all cat question from geometry from 2017 18 19 and 20 in tomorrow on my youtube lrdi ka koi class tha hi nahi kal anand um i don't really have any lrdi classes uh planned for this month i think there is just yeah so here are the ones so i have one planned on 11th august then on 18th august and then on 25th august anand hota tha wo har mahine ka naya schedule banta hai you are talking about the july schedule in august this is what i am covering mastering uh, the past previous year papers and this is the schedule i would recommend that you guys download the schedule so you have it uh, with you handy so that you know what all courses are there this is the schedule for my upcoming course on di this is the schedule for my upcoming course on di so please download it go through it at length and let's not waste too much time and get started with the questions unless there is something about preparation that you guys want to ask about please ask any questions that you might have about preparation if you want me to start the questions then give me a thumbs up if you have any doubts about cat preparation that you want to ask please do so okay i am going ahead now so this is the first question from cat 2020 that we will be discussing today on a rectangular metal sheet of area 135 square a circle is painted such that the circle touches two opposite sides 
if the area of the sheet left unpainted is two third of the painted area, okay, uh, then the perimeter of the rectangle in inches is how much? So that's what I need to figure out. Let me see if I can make a clear diagram for this. Suppose this is my rectangle. In this rectangle, I have a circle which is touching two sides. Okay, so this is my circle which is touching two sides. Then uh, the total area, the total area is given to me as 135. That means length into breadth is 135. Now, if you notice, what is the breadth? What is this particular line, the green line? The green line is nothing else but the diameter, which means, which means if you want to look at it from an equation perspective, length into 2R is given to me as 135 because this will be 2R. Then we are given if the area of the sheet left unpainted. So what is the area of the sheet left unpainted? L or 135 minus pi R square. If this is equal to two third of the painted area. So this is two third of the painted area, which is pi r square, which means two third plus one. So five by three of pi r square is 135. So five and 135 gets canceled as 27. So my radius r square comes out as 81 by pi or my radius comes out as 9 by root pi. Do you guys agree with the value of the radius that I have found? 9 by root pi. Okay. What am I asked to find out? The perimeter of the rectangle. So now I got the radius. I know L into 2R is 135, which means that length which was 135 by 2r now i know that my length is 135 by 2 into 9 by root pi 135 goes from 9 it becomes 15 so length come to, comes out as 15 root pi by 2 i have the length now i have the length now 15 root pi by 2, what do I don't have? I have length as 15 root pi by 2. What I do not have here is the breadth or breadth also I have is 2R. R was 9 by root pi. So breadth is twice of that. So that is 18 by root pi. What be my perimeter? Perimeter will be twice of length plus breadth, which is twice of 15 root pi by 2 plus 18 by root pi. What can I take common? Uh, if I look at the options, they are either 3 root pi, 5 root pi, 4 root pi or 3 root pi. So my goal here, my goal here will be to take 3 root pi common. And 2 goes inside. So if I take 3 root pi outside, 
From this, if I'm taking root pi outside, I'll be left with 15 by 2. Multiply by 2, I'll be left with 15. So basically, what I will be left with is 5 on the inside, 5 on the inside, plus from this, I take 3 outside. I take 3 outside, so I'm left with 6, 6 into 2, 12, another root pi is taken. So 3 root pi outside, inside will be 5 plus 12 by pi, which is given to me as the first option. Are you guys okay with this? Finding out the perimeter. Uh, Komal, if you want to start from basics, probably this is not the best class for you because here we are discussing a previous year paper. My recommendation to you, Komal, would be that you join a batch which is, you know, kind of starting from basics. For example, for example, one of my batches, yeah, it's starting from the 4th of August, so which is, you know, in a couple of days. In this particular batch, I'll be covering DI. So that will be a good idea for you, Komal. And uh, I hope you guys know that there are two types of courses which are available on an academy. One is a plus course and one is an iconic course. In the plus course, you get live classes, very similar to this class. And you get it in a structured way. That is, you do this, then this, then this, and order is followed. You also have an iconic plan where you get personalized guidance. Oh, today is fourth, so yeah, so the batch is starting from today. My class in this batch is starting from the 9th. So from Monday, I'll be covering, uh, starting Monday, I'll be covering DI in this particular batch from the basics. The fees, uh, so the, as I said, two programs. Uh, in the iconic plan, you will have one-on-one -on -one live mentorship uh, by top B school graduates. You can discuss your doubts uh, with them. The fee for this plan, uh, if you are targeting CAT 2021, then my recommendation would be to go in for the plus plan, which is for six months, which is for 16400. If you use the coupon code Honda in that, you will get a 10% further uh, discount on this fee. On the other hand, uh, if you are targeting next year, that is CAT 22, then my recommendation would be to go in for the iconic plan and go for the 12 month plan, which is for 40,000. Once again, roughly 40,000, roughly. And you can use the coupon code Honda in that as well to get a 10% discount on it. Uh, can I go ahead with the other questions, Komal? Or if you have any questions about this, about the plans and preparation, I'll be happy to answer them as well. Give me a thumbs up if you guys want me to go to the next question. Okay, let's see. Please try this one out. Again, all questions that we are discussing today are from CAT 2020 slot one. Two parts of it have been covered. This is the third part that we will be covering today. You have f of five plus x is equal to f of 5 minus x. You are also given, you are also given that for every real value, for every real value, uh, for uh, every real x, such that fx is equal to 0, there are four values which you can put here. So, suppose one of the values is 1, f1 comes out as 0, f2 comes out as 0, f3 comes out as 0, and f4 comes out as 0, then you sum of these roots, then you are asked for the value of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, your answer will be 10. If you get these as 1, 2, 3, 4, if you get them as uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, then your answer will be 100. If you get them as 5, 10, 15, 20, then your answer would be something else. So what you need to do is, you need to figure out what these values are at which they become zero or if you cannot figure out these values, at least try and figure out what their sum will be. 
That is what you need to do in this question. How will you proceed with this? Poll? Okay. Here you go. Um, try and answer it if you can. The problem is I don't remember a lot of the answers. So it becomes a little difficult for me to have the polls. I just solve them as and when I get them. Anupama has answered this correctly. Okay. I think she's the only one who has. Sakshi has answered this correctly as well. Can you tell me the next step? What will you do in this question? How will you go to the next step in this? You have f of 5 plus x equal to f of 5 minus x. Suppose, suppose randomly if I take x as 1, then you have f of 6 equal to f of 4. If I take x as 5, then you have f of 10 equal to f0. Does that help you in any way to figure out the answer? Is there something that you can do with this information that you can proceed with this? We know that F5 is actually F5. We know that if I take X as 0, I get F5 as F5. Can you do something? What will be the next step? If you can just tell me the next step, half your problem will be solved. Half your problem will be solved if you can just tell me what the next step should be. Anyone? Ojas is absolutely right. That is what we need to do. We know that fx is equal to 0. So I should try and convert this to x. If I try and convert this to x, that means if I put x equal to x minus 5, what will happen? If I put x as x minus 5, I will get 5 plus x minus 5 on the left hand side will be equal to f of 5 minus of x minus 5 on the right hand side which means f of x is equal to f of 10 minus x which essentially means that if fx is 0 10 minus x is also 0 so if if fx is 0 and f of 10 minus x is 0 now Let's assume some random root. Suppose, randomly speaking, randomly speaking, I say that one of the roots is 17. So, if one of the roots is 17, what is the other root? So, if fx or f17 is 0, that will mean f of 10 minus 17 or f of minus 7 is also 0. If I say, randomly speaking, uh, x equal to 7 is a or rather x equal to 3 is a root then f of x which is 3 will be equal to 10 minus 3 f7 will be 0 if i say randomly x equal to um, 11 is a root then f of 21 will be equal to 10 minus sorry f of 11 will be equal to f of minus 1 which will be 0. So now can I know these values 17, 3, 11 I don't. But what I can know is a pattern. I say that if 17 is a root then minus 7 is a root. If a is a root then 10 minus a is a root which means sum of two roots will be how much? Sum of two roots will be a plus 10 minus a which will be 10 and if sum of two roots is 10 then 
sum of four roots will be how much? That will be 20, which is given to me as option three. Are you okay with that? It's on the harder side, on the harder side, not denying it, but I hope you guys got the concept involved here where you need to find out a relationship between them. So this is the course that I was talking about. We are also starting a course for Maharashtra CET today. You guys are more than welcome to join that as well. Let's quickly move on to the next question. This one is from time, speed and distance. Please try this out and tell me what's the answer that you get here. A straight road connects points A and B. Okay. Car 1 travels from A to B. Car 2 travels from B to A. So car 1, car 2. Both leaving at the same time. After meeting each other, they take 45 minutes and 20 minutes to read uh, respectively to complete their journeys. Um, Sanket, I don't remember the answers, so I don't know what the correct answer for this will be. I calculate them as and when I solve it. Oh, so Sanket says that the answer will be 90. Let's check if Sanket is right or not. Suppose they meet at the meeting point M. After meeting, they take 45 minutes. So car one takes 45 minutes to finish the journey. Car 2 takes 60 minutes to finish the journey. Sorry, car 2 takes 20 minutes to finish the journey. If car 1 travels at a speed of 60 km per hour, then what is the speed of car 2? Now, for those of you who know the formula, S1 by S2 is given by root of T2 by T1. That's the formula that you need to use here. How did this formula come? What is the logic behind this? I'll explain it shortly. But this is the formula that you need to use in the exam. You should be aware of this formula. You should be aware of when to use it and so on. So S1 is given to me as 60. S2 is what I'm trying to find out. Time taken by 2 is 20 minutes time taken by 1 is 45 minutes so if i cancel by 5 this is 4 by 9 which means 60 by s2 is 2 by 3 so s2 will be 3 by 2 of 60 which comes out as 90 minutes given to me as option 4 are you guys okay with this? And I hope you guys know this formula, uh, which can be used to quickly find it out. For those of you who are wondering, how did this formula come? Let me spend a couple of minutes in explaining the formula as well. Suppose you have two people starting S1, S2, they meet at a point M and, uh, to meet, to meet, they take time. So suppose this takes time T to reach here, both of them. So this will also take the time T to reach here. Then S1 finishes this part of the journey in time T1. S2 finishes this part of the journey in time T2. Now you look at the distances. A to M. S1 is covering it in time T. S2 is covering it in time T2. What about BM? What about BM? S2 is covering it in T. And S1 is covering it in T1. Divide the two. T and T cancels. What am I left with? S1 goes to the other side, becomes S1 square. 
S2 goes to the other side becomes S2 square which is equal to T2 by T1 which gives me the formula S1 by S2 is equal to root of T2 by T1. That's how you derive this particular formula and once you have the formula obviously you can get to the answer fairly quickly. Let's try this one out. Another question on time, speed and distance. These are all questions from the CAT 2020 paper. So it should not be, you know, uh, some of you might think that it's too easy or too difficult. Nothing like that. These are all questions from the 2020 paper. These are all questions which were asked. So you should be comfortable with the ideas. Sadam, this is the formula. S1 by S2 is root T2 by T1. Please try this. Leaving home at the same time, Amal reaches office at 10.15 and if he travels at 8 km per hour at 9.40 a.m., he travels at 15 km per hour leaving home at 9.10 a.m. Okay. So, suppose this is home and this is office. Amal reaches office at 10.15 a.m. if he travels at 8 kilometers per hour. So if he travels at 8 kilometer per hour, then he reaches at 10.15 a.m. At 9.40 a.m., if he travels at 15 kilometer per hour, Now, how much time has reduced? How much time has reduced? From 10.15, he's reaching at 9.40. That means he's saving 35 minutes. What about the speed? His speed has become 15 by 8 of the original. So his time taken will become 8 by 15 of the original. So if speed has become 15 by 8, time taken has become 8 by 15. So how much time is he saving? So the time that he will save will be original time minus new time, which is 70 by 15. And that is given to me as 30. 5 minutes. So 7 and this get cancelled, which means originally he was taking 75 minutes for the journey. 75 minutes is in if you convert it to hours is 1.25 hours. So what is the distance? When he was traveling at 8 km per hour, he took 1.25 hours, which means the total distance that he has covered is 10 kilometers. Now what is he doing? Now he will leave home at 9.10. He wants to reach office by 10 a.m., which means he wants to cover 10 kilometers in 50 minutes. So what should be his speed? His speed should be 1 by 5 kilometer or 0.2 kilometers per minute. Uh, we need the speed in kilometer per hour. Okay. So it is 0.2 kilometers per minute converted to hours, multiplied with 60. So it should be 12 kilometer per hour, which is given to me as option four. Are you guys okay with this? 12 kilometer per hour as the answer for this one. 
please give me a thumbs up if you're okay with this if you have any doubts please use the chat window to ask your doubts So um, if you register today, if you register today, we'll, you'll get a free personal mock interview and GD along uh, with your campus placement support that we are providing in our courses. How about this one? ABC are positive integers such that AB is 432, BC is 96 and C is less than 9. So A into B is 432, B into C is 96, and C is less than 9. I have to find out the smallest possible value of A plus B plus C. Okay? So C should be a factor of 96 and less than 9. So let's take various cases. I think that's the easiest and the simplest possible way to do this that you take cases when c is 8 c is 6 c is 4 c is 2 and see what happens okay so let's do that if i take c as 8 just imagine so 96 by 8 is how much? B will be 96 by 8. 96 by 8 is 12. And that will mean A will be 432 by 12, which is uh, 36 and 72. So 37, if I'm not wrong. So what is my total? 37 plus 12 plus 8. So this is coming out as 57. Sorry, 36. So this is coming out as 56. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Maybe there is some other option which comes out as lesser. If I take C as 6, then B comes out as 96 by 6 or 16. And in that case, A will be 432 by 16. How much is 432 by 16? 27. And 27 plus 16 plus 6. So that is 27 plus 22. 27 plus 22. This comes out as 49. So if this comes out as 49, what does that tell me? That tells me my answer can never be 59. Because I already have lesser values than that. My answer cannot be 56. My answer can be 49 or 46. Okay. Let me try the next one. Uh, so C I cannot take as 5. Suppose I take C as 4. Then B comes out as 96 by 4. Which is 24. Rahul, they are integers. I have, I'll only take the values which are factors of 96. Na? If I take C as 7, what will be the value of B? They are positive integers. 96 is not divisible by 7. I am only allowed to take values which are uh, factors of 96. So A comes out as 432 by 24, which is how much? 18. So this is 18 plus 24, 42 plus 4. This comes out as 46. And once this comes out as 46, I know there is no need to check the other values. There is no need to check the other values because there is no option which is lesser than 46. There is no other option. Technically, I should check for C equal to 2 and C equal to 1 also. Technically, I need to check these two also. If it was a fill in the blank question, because then I'll check with two and one and see which one is the smallest value that emerges. But here, since it was options, 
once I tried via the options, I got that 46 is the smallest value. That becomes my answer. Please try this one out. So this is 2 to the power x plus 2 to the power of minus x, which is 1 by 2 to the power x, which is equal to 2 minus x minus 2 whole square. This is what the equation is given to me. And now I need to solve this. This looks like a very scary sort of equation. Exponential be a quadratic is also there. How do I proceed with this? What do I do in this question to solve it out? To figure out the value, so to say, what can I do here? Anyone with any suggestions? I hope uh, you guys know a couple of things. One is log no. One is that any positive value p plus 1 by p will always be greater than or equal to 2. Any perfect square will always be greater than or equal to 0. Now, maybe you can solve it now. Maybe you can, you know, look at this. Does this give you any ideas or hints to get to the answer? Any suggestions for this? How can you get to the answers? Okay, let me explain. So what you do here is this particular part, this will be greater than or equal to 2 in all cases. This is perfectly positive. So this is greater than or equal to 0, which means from 2 we are removing a positive quantity. That means this will always be less than or equal to 2. So my left hand side is greater than or equal to 2. My right hand side is less than or equal to 2. So how is this possible that the equality exists? So that will only happen when LHS is equal to RHS and both of them are equal to 2. Now, what is the condition for LHS to be equal to 2? That means 2 to the power x plus 1 by 2 to the power x that is equal to 2. This will only happen when 2 to the power x is 1, which will only happen when x is 0. For the right hand side to become 2, that means 2 minus x minus 2 whole square is equal to 2, which means 2 and 2 cancels or x minus 2 whole square is equal to 0 or I get the value of x is equal to 2. Now, my left hand side wants that x should be equal to 0. My right hand side wants x should be equal to 2. Both of them happening at the same time is not possible, which means this question has zero solutions. Are you okay with this? Because I'm getting uh, for this to satisfy LHS equal to RHS should be equal to 2. And for that to happen, the value of x should be either 0 or 2, which is not possible here. Uh, if you have any doubts with this, please ask. And if you are okay with this, as usual, I ask you to give me a thumbs up so that I can go to the next question. Satun, Rahul, hope you guys are okay with this. Okay. On an academy, uh, every day we have started to do, you know, these little skill building tests which help you with the values uh, of, uh, you know, improves your current affairs, improves your vocabulary. So I would recommend that you guys try out these tests every day. Please try this one out. This is based on geometry, mensuration. As a matter of fact, I'm taking a couple of classes on mensuration today evening at 5 p.m. and at 7 p.m. 5 p.m. on YouTube and 7 p.m. 
on uh, the on special class itself if you guys can just go to my profile you will get the links for both of those classes or you can join my telegram group here so this group uh, will essentially help you get the links and all the notifications of whatever classes are happening when in this question what is happening a solid right circular cone of height 27 cm so this is my cone height of the cone is 27 is cut into two pieces along a plane parallel to a base at the height of 18 from the base so at the height of 18 you cut it this is how you have made the cut the difference in the volume of the two pieces is 225 cc okay let me call this as piece let me call this as a and let me call this as b and what I'll now try to do is I'll try and find out the volumes. I'll look at A first. What is the shape of A? A is a small cone. The height of the cone, the height of the cone from 27 has become 9. If the radius was uh, let's say that the radius is R here. So if the radius is R here, then the radius here will be 3R. See, when the height of the cone is 9, then the radius is R. So here, when the height becomes triple, the radius will also become triple and the radius will be 3R. So what is the volume of A? The volume of A will be 1 by 3 pi R square into the height, which is 9. So this is 3 pi r square. Very similarly, when I try and look at B, now B is a bucket, inverted bracket of sorts. This sort of a figure is known as a frustum with r here and 3 r here. So how do I find out the volume of B? For the volume of B, what you can do is you can consider the overall volume as B. And from that, you remove VA. So what's the overall volume? 1 by 3 pi 3R three square into the height, which is 27, minus volume of A, which was 3 pi R square. So how much is this? pi r square so 3 into 3 is 9 9 into 27 by 3 is 27 into 3 or 81 pi r square minus 3 pi r square is 78 pi r square what is given to me in the question is the difference in the volume of the two pieces is 225 which means we are given vb minus VA is 225. I found out VB is 78 R square, VA is 3 pi R square, which means this is 75 pi R square is 225, which means pi R square is 3. That's essentially what I was looking for volume of the original cone. So volume of the original cone was 81 pi r square. We had calculated it. So if pi r square I have obtained as 3, then 81 pi r square will be 243, which is given to me as option 4. Are you guys okay with this? Option 4 is the answer. Hi Nishita, Kunal, Sonali, people who have just joined. What we are doing in this class is that we are discussing 
previous year questions from the CAT 2020 paper. That's what uh, I'm trying to cover today. If you guys are okay with this question, please give me a thumbs up so that I can move on to the next question. Okay, please try this out. And given the value of x as 4096 to the power of 7 plus 4 root 3, 4096 is 64 square, uh, 2 to the power 6, yes. 64 into 2 plus 7, uh, sorry, 2 into 7 plus 4 root 3. This is the value of x. Now we need to find out what is 64 equal to. So basically, 64 is equal to x to the power of 1 by twice of 7 plus 4 root 3. Now this is what I need to, you know, determine which of the options matches. I solved the question for you. There wasn't much to solve in the question. Now all you need to do is look at this, look at the options and tell me which one fits. Look at what I have written and now you need to tell me which of these options fits. So I have 1 by 2 into 7 plus 4 root 3. Let me rationalize this. How will I rationalize this? I'll multiply it with 7 minus 4 root 3 at the top and 7 minus 4 root 3 at the bottom. So I will have 7 minus 4 root 3 in the numerator divided by 2 into 7 square which is 49 minus 4 root 3 square. 4 square is 16 into 3 or 48. So I will have 7 minus 4 root 3 by 2 as my power which means I have x to the power of 7 minus 4 root 3 by 2 which means I have x to the power of 7 by 2 into x to the power of minus 2 root 3 because 4 by 2 will get cancelled which means I'll have x to the power of 7 by 2 minus goes in the denominator and x to the power of 2 root 3. Do I have that? x to the power of 7 by 2 in the numerator here and here x to the power of 4 root 3 is here, so no, 2 root 3 is here, so yes, option 4 comes out as my answer. So this question might look really scary and complicated, but I hope you guys realize that it wasn't that scary and complicated. All that you needed to do in uh, this particular question was just rationalize and you'll get the value. Every Sunday, we conduct a scholarship test to get access to that scholarship test, you can use the coupon code HANDA. Uh, the toppers in the test get the course completely for free. It happens every Sunday. I'll recommend each and every one of you to try it out. How about this one? Viru invested 10,000 rupees at 5% simple interest, annual interest. Okay. So Viru had invested 10,000 at 5% simple interest. So after, at the end of year one, how much money will he have? 10,500. At the end of year 2, how much money will he have? 11,000. At the end of year 3, how much money will he have? 11,500. At the end of year 4, how much money will he have? 12,000 and so on. This is how it will continue. What about Viru? Or what about the Joy? Joy invested 
8,000 at 10% after two years. So he did not invest here. He did not invest here. Here he will have 8,800. At the end of year four, he'll have another 800. So which is 9,600. And this is how their fortunes are going to proceed. Are you guys okay with these? The values for the fortunes that I have written. Then, after how many years, after we do's investment, their balances, principal plus accumulated, will be equal. So let's check. Let's say it happens after n years. So what will be Viru's value after n years? He started 10,000. Every year it is growing by 500. So 10,000 plus 500 n. How about Joy? Joy started with 8,000. Every year it is growing by 800. But he started two years late. So that is why it will be multiplied with n minus 2. This is the equation that you will need to solve. So 10,000 minus 8,000 is 2,000. 800 into 2 is 1,600. So 2,000 plus 1,600, I'll have 3,600 as my constant. 800n minus 500n is 300n. So I get the value of n as 12. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward question. I once again hope that you guys are okay with this. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you're okay with this. If you have any doubts, please feel free to ask them via the chat feature. I think we'll have one or two more questions. Please try this one out. These are all questions for those of you who are joining us late. For those of you who are joining us late, let me just uh, tell you once again. What we are doing today is CAT 2020 slot 1 part 3. Part 1 and 2 I covered in my YouTube and this is part 3 where I am discussing the 10 questions. I take a lot of classes on YouTube. I take a lot of classes as special classes. So I would request you guys to please join my Telegram group to get all the necessary updates about all the classes. Uh, once we do this question, I will tell you about the schedule of my upcoming classes and my upcoming courses as well. Let's just do this particular question once. Hi Abhishek. The mean of all four digit even natural numbers A, A, B, B where uh, A is greater than zero. So what will be the smallest four digit even natural number? 1100. Then we will have 1122, 1144, 1166, 1188. Okay, fair enough. Then 2200, 2222, 2244, 2266, 2288, then 3300, 4300, the series will continue till 9900, 9922, 9944, 9966, and 9988. This is what I will have. I'm asked to find out the mean of all of this. So to find out the mean, what I need to do is I need to add up all of them. How many terms are there? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9. So there are 45 terms. What I need to do is I need to sum all of them up and divide by 45. That is one way, but that is very long and tedious. Can you guys suggest an easier method? Can you guys suggest an easier method? By AP. Gotham is absolutely right. See, how much are we getting added? So 22, 22, 22, 22. But the problem, uh, Gautam, in considering this AP is that from 1188 
to, to 22,000, the increase is of 12. And then it again becomes 22, 22, 22, 22. So the idea that for an AP, for those of you who do not know, for an AP, the mean or the average is the middle term. For an AP, the average is always the middle term. But here, the problem is that I do not have a complete AP. So what do I do, Gautam? At least I can say for the first row, 1144 is the average. For the second row, 2244 is the average. For the fifth row, 9944 is the average. So that much I can say, but the question is asking me for the overall average. So how do I find out the overall average? For finding out the overall average, I just need to consider these terms. So 3344, 4444, all of these terms are the purple terms in an AP. Yes, in the purple terms, they are also in an AP with a common difference of 100. Which means that the average of all of these, the average for all of these will be the middle value here. What will be the middle value? It will end in 4, 4. There is only one term which is ending in 4, 4. So that will be the middle term 5, 5, 4, 4. Are you guys okay with this? 5, 5, 4, 4 is the answer. That's the idea that Gautam suggested. Gautam, good job. The key thing in this question is that for an arithmetic progression, the average is indeed the middle term. Now, just to remind you, so special classes are the classes which happen on the Unacademy app. This is my plan for this month. I hope you guys will download this and will join me in these classes. To give you a brief idea, uh, we are doing Mastering the Plus CAT 2020 Slot 1 Part 3 today. Next week, same time, we will do Slot 2. The week after that, same time, we'll do part three. The week after that, we will do part four uh, of CAT 2019. Every Saturday at 7 p.m., I conduct a GK quiz, uh, which will help you for SAT and IFT. So that's what I'm planning to do on every Saturday. I'll not, you know, remove these uh text so that it is easier for you to figure out later when you download the pdf so these are the special classes that i have planned and these are my classes on mastering the past of which this was a part of where i'm covering previous papers you might have noticed i'm saying part three part three part three part four here where is part one and two part one and two are happening on youtube so every tuesday wednesday that's what my plan is so you guys can get my channel live. I've already pinned the Telegram group, so you can get it from there. I'm also conducting a lot of classes on geometry this week. I'll pick up some other topic next week for this week. So today evening at 5 p.m., I'm taking a class on the advanced concepts of mensuration. And at 7 p.m., I'm taking another special class, which will be consisting of CAT questions on mensuration. Tomorrow, I'll be covering complete geometry all geometry that has been asked in 17, 18, 19, and 20. That is what my agenda for tomorrow is going to be. So I hope you'll be there with me for that. And for those of you who are already subscribed and enrolled at An Academy, my plus course on data interpretation is starting on the 9th of August, Monday. So I request you guys to please come in and join me for that. An Academy for its enrolled students also has an Ask a Doubt feature where you can click a picture, send it to us, Either me or someone from our team will clarify that for you. And if you're planning to enroll, once again, a reminder for you to please use the coupon code HANDA. And on that note, I would like to end this class. Hope you guys like this. Hope you guys enjoy this. And your feedback is really, really important. If I get positive feedback, I'll be allowed to take more classes on the platform, both for free and for paid. So I request you to please uh, you know, you'll get a smiley or a thumbs up at the end of the class. So please do that. Vivekaran, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Gautam. Bye, Satun. Please do provide positive feedback in the feedback form uh, and stuff which comes at the end. Bye, guys.